make a horrible call that cost you the game late penalty against a guy cheesy call call a goal that went over the goal line that didn't go in referees make mistakes referees make bad calls how do you handle it when I played pro hockey minor hockey college hockey I had terrible referees we all do they're there and there's great referees we've all heard the saying the best referees are ones you don't even know they were at the game because they play a game or the referee the game you don't even know they were there. They didn't make any controversial calls. But more often than not, they make horse shit calls. That's what happens. Now, at the end of the game, you can't blame a loss on a bad call. Simple as that. If you leave the game close enough where the referee can have an effect on the game, you got to dance with the girl you brought. you got to take it and like it. Too many people blame losses on the referees. And yes, it's a bad goal. It's going to happen. But it also works with hockey karma. Referees make bad calls against the other team as well. In your mind, you have survivor bias. You think they're always making bad calls against you. They're not. They're making bad calls against every goalie, every team. It happens. So knowing that, let's have a positive approach to it. Expect it to be there. And when it happens, don't be surprised. And if you can, don't leave the game close enough where they can have an effect. Now obviously goaltending is a receptive position and you can't go score goals or take the body or try harder. You just got to keep the pucks out of your net. So really, in your situation, you can't really force that issue. But just bear in mind on a team basis, anytime a referee makes a terrible call that costs you the game, don't blame the referee. Blame yourself for leaving the game close enough. Do you manage your referees like you manage your game? It's an important part of the game. Managing referees. Referees can drive you insane. They make bad calls, they make good calls. They call pucks that are goals that aren't goals, and vice versa. I'm gonna to argue today on why you should manage your referees and give you some tips on how to get great success out of your relationship with the referees. First things first, the referee in a high level game straddles the goal line just off to your side every defensive zone faceoff. There's many times for interactions with him throughout the game, and I suggest early on reaching out to the referee and chatting with him. First step, talk to him. Find out what's going on. Does he have a girlfriend in town? How's his day going? Small talk. What's going on, buddy? Just chat him early up. Be a decent human being early. The first time you get a bad call, late whistle, somebody's hacking you, don't go over and rip him a new one. Don't scream at him. Don't yell at him. Maintain composure. 
What happens when the referee likes you is they're humans. They can't help but help you. So if you maintain an even composure and you're a likable personality, even in the face of drama and somebody screwed you over, hacked you, whacked you, late whistle, whatever, don't get wound up and go screaming at the referee. Be nice to him. Later on, he'll help you. I'll tell you an example of that. There was a time when I was playing in the minors for the Milwaukee Admirals, and we had a, a, an NHL referee named Donnie Van Massenhoven who hadn't made the NHL yet, but was refereeing us there. And there was a time when there's a scramble in front of the net, and I had the puck covered. Whistle didn't blow. Dig, 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 dig. Finally, puck gets poked out, goes in the net. Now, we've all been in that position. You've seen NHL goalies in that position. Normally what happens is the goalie loses their mind. I didn't. I went over, I talked to him. I said, hey, I think I had that. Help me out. And kept calm composure. And he refereed, I think, six games the rest of that year for our team. And you know what? Anytime the puck was anywhere near being covered, he quick whistled it. And it probably saved me four or five goals the rest of the year and helped me get more wins. So I have some advice for you. Show some emotional intelligence. No matter how wronged you are by the referee, no matter what the missed call is, build that relationship. And you'll find not only does it help you that game, it's going to help you later in the season, maybe in the playoffs, and maybe you'll be holding up that championship trophy because you had emotional control and built your relationship with the referee. Time for Q&A with Keeks. I recently asked on my Instagram for people to submit questions, and I would answer them. Anything you want to learn from the GOAT, so here we go. First question, Liam Rice 31 says, How long slash often should I be training during the off season if I'm serious about putting in the work to get to the next level? Well, that question's twofold. Number one, depends on your age. Younger guys are obviously going to be doing less. Older guys are going to be doing more. So it's a very specific, detailed answer to your question based on your age. And also the time of the year, uh, in-season, off-season, etc. I suggest reaching out to Maria Mountain. She's the expert in off-ice training. But I'll give you a general tip on that. If you think you're doing enough, you're not. You need to do more. So reach out to Maria Mountain at GoalieTraining.com and she can help get you fixed up with a great program. Or reach out to me and I can get you some great stuff. But generally speaking, everybody practices, everybody plays games. Where you get different uh, approaches and different growth is by being a harder worker off the ice. Because that's where, quite frankly, a lot of people won't do the extra work. They all practice about the same number of games, practice the same amount of practice, same amount of games. So you get better about the same level as all your competition. Where people won't do it is in the gym, on the hills, and at the track. So off-ice training is crucial. Do more than the RDR and you'll get where you need to go. Booster asks, our little guy loves playing net like an everyday non-stop, but he can get really mad when he gets scored on. He does get over it quickly, but any tips to make sure he doesn't take it too far? I think the biggest thing with young goalies is you have to understand it doesn't matter. When you're 10 or 11, 12, 13, nobody cares what your goals against average was, how many tournaments you won, or anything that happens in your hockey. You just got to get one year better every single year. You got to get one day better every day. So stress to your kid that he could give up 18 goals. An NHL scout five years from now is not going to care. So my simple answer to that, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Not going to mean you're not going to try on the goals, but who cares? You're 12 years old. You're 10 years old. Nobody cares. BNGO says, what are some things that short goalies should not be doing that taller goalies are normally trained to do in the net? Well, a good example is Jeff Lurk. He was a goaltender that I trained. Uh, he ended up winning a, a national championship with Michigan State. Super small. He could hang from the crossbar by his arms and swing his legs. He was a smurf. He's a little munchkin. One thing you have to do when you're smaller is you have to challenge more. You have to have more aggressive depth to fill up the same amount of space. You also have to be a better skater because when you're challenging more to get laterally, you're going to have to have much better skating ability to get there. So smaller, goal, smaller goalies are going to have to do more than bigger goalies. So biggest thing I'd say is challenge more and become a better skater. Okay, Sebastian Wanko asks, what drills would you recommend for getting better at screens and tips? Well, the higher up you go, the better they are at screening you, the better they are at tips. 
They can tip pucks out of the air. They can do delayed screen. It becomes an art form. And if you watch Instagram, you can see awesome guys screening and tipping all day long, making miraculous things happen. As a goalie, the first thing is you got to visually battle with violence. you got to look around and you've got to find the puck. You can't accept being screened. Props and practice like screen boards, peekaboo screen boards, uh, those are great things. And actually replicating the drill you're talking about where you're going to have guys standing in front of you. It's not something you can turn the switch on overnight and be great at screens and tips. It's something you can practice. And I think using props and realistic game situations will really help you. Okay. Jay Gramlick 47 How about vinyl window stickers for the GOAT? They're coming. Ron Sylvia, 72, asks, the coach will ask my son between periods on his thoughts, and I guess the coach is trying to find out from the goalie what he thinks what's going on in the game, team-wise and with himself, which is pretty uncommon. Typically, head coaches don't really talk to goalies. They just want to sort of leave them to their own devices. But in answer to that question, I think the best answer from the goalie should be, things are going great, things are going fine, and you know, even if they're not, don't be throwing your teammates under the bus. Uh, take care of your own business, and when the coach, media, whoever it is, asks you what the team's basically doing wrong, uh, ignore the question, deflect the question, and just say that they're protecting you, they're clearing rebounds, we're working hard, and just make a political answer to that. Delford slash G says, what's the biggest tip you can give a goalie? Have fun. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You want to get better, you want to stop the next puck, but it's not the end of the world if you get scored on. Have fun. It's hockey. It's a game. Bents.y says, how to read the vertical angle of the puck? Like lateral angles, the vertical angle is basically a triangle that goes from the puck to the crossbar. And clearly, if you're out at the top of the crease, you're going to be covering more aerial angles. So there's no really reading the aerial angle. The closer the puck gets to you, the lower you drop your hands, and the more you got to take care of that aerial angle by being out at the top of the crease. Fanto Orange Jean says, do you have any tips in dealing with helping goalies, U12, U15, who easily uh, tilts in games and practices when they let in a, a crap goal or simply too many goals? By the way, thanks for your videos and posts. They're great. Appreciate that. Um, basically, again, with kids at any age, just keep it fun. It helps them understand the big picture. They're getting better in practice every day. They're getting better in games each day. Yeah, you're going to let in shit goals. Um, you just have to be able to park those and worry about getting better every day. Part of the growth is letting in shit goals. That's how you learn. So when you get one, don't get upset about it. Make it a learning experience. Amateur 1978 asks, is a child's goal to get a scholarship and play hockey typically in the U.S. beyond maintaining grades? What can he do? He's got great marks. How do you get to that level and invite it for tryouts? It's quite simple. Scholarships are given to kids that are dominating in the USHL, junior hockey in Ontario, and clearly, what you have to do is be dominating at that level. So if you're not at the junior level right now, you're not at the AAA level, find out what's broken in your game and fix it. Get to play junior, then you have to dominate junior, and then scouts will find you. That's all you have to worry about is dominating the current level you're at and just keep climbing up that ladder. Last question of the day, John Volan 86 says, how to stop straight shots more often? Example, reading where the puck is going on a shot from the slot. Also, something shorter goalies can do to stop more shots that taller, taller goalies don't do besides getting out further. You got a guy in the slot, that's a high percentage scoring shot. One thing I'd say is, you know, you got to keenly understand the stick puck relationship and know that one inch off the puck, try to assess trajectory and where it's going. But because reactionary time is so limited, if a guy's shooting from the slot, you better get your butt out to the top of the crease. And quite frankly, a guy like Pecoretti, six foot five, he'd be a foot outside the top of the crease. So in any case where a guy's in high percentage scoring chance like that, get your butt out of the net.